So, I'm here with Nick Lawrence. We're here in your lovely home. And uh, thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Uh, well, let's start off right from the top. Before we even get into boxing, let's talk about this photography passion of yours. How did you get into photography before boxing? I, I was always keen on, on photography and I like challenges. And um, I'd never been, I was, I was 18, I'd never been to a game park and someone said to me try wildlife and then boxing and I was very fortunate I bumped into Natasha and Bob Yerm's wife and I asked if there's any chance of taking boxing she said yes and at first it was very difficult to get a seat at, at ringside things have changed since but yes I tried it and I I enjoyed it and then I just wanted to do one or two and I went to Soweto and I did a, a photo shoot there and a young guy, Gift Bowler, came to me and he said, you'd Uncle Nick, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have anything to show our friends and family and that got to me. I, I do it, it, I don't get paid, don't get paid at all for, for any of the boxing stuff that I do and the joy. I know that I've had so many youngsters. There aren't many people, or, or, or let's say the majority of them, don't own DSTV. So what do they, they have a fight, they don't see it. And the, the, the beauty of photography is that they keep popping up. The people have them and they can look at them any time. Um, but yes, that's, that's how I got involved and now I'm sort of committed and I work edit uh, again my photography cost me a lot of money the people that that have said on on social media that it's all I'm in it for the money and that I had a, a boxing couple of boxing books printed I gave them away uh, some of them so no I'm not in it for for money at all it's just to give enjoyment not only to myself but to a number of people and then, and then talk about your relationship with Golden Gloves. I mean, it's obviously grown throughout the years. As soon as you got on board, there was sort of the first tournament that you that you that you uh, f photographed, and now you're sort of going around South Africa and growing. But first of all, just talk about Golden Gloves, and then elaborate. Golden Gloves. It was a name you read about, heard about, um, Mr. Rodney Berman. I you would see him, and I was nervous of him, and. When I went to, to the first number of boxing shows, it was, I felt like an imposter. Uh, and I want to make it quite clear. I'm an amateur photographer with professional equipment. And my relationship with Golden Gloves has just grown from strength to strength. Jeff Ellis has guided me a lot when it comes to taking boxing photographs. We, we have an honest relationship doesn't like something, he lets me know, I don't, I'll let him know, but that relationship will just keep growing. Um, uh, I, I'd like nothing more than when Mr. Berman calls me across and asks me to take a photo of him and some other personality. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's something that'll grow. And I'm, I'm very pleased that through that, other promoters have, have, have seen what I do and I've been invited around and it's, it's so nice to walk in and you feel welcome. That, that for me is, is, is a big thing. But Golden Gloves, I take my hat off to them. They helped me to get going. Well, since then, I mean, let's just go through memory lane. You went to Monte Carlo, Monaco. That was a big trip for you. You met a special character there, Randy Caballero. And I know that's, that's to this day, that's one of the one of your favorite moments being a boxing photographer was him. Can you just tell us a little bit more about Randy Caballero? I met Randy and his dad, and they were such nice, plausible people, so much so that I asked his dad whether I could use the pads. Of course, Randy didn't, didn't hit me. But the guy that Randy fought was a gent by the name of Stuart Hall, the most miserable attitude person I've ever come across. So I actually said to Randy, Randy, 
if you beat Hall, I will give you a bonus. And at the end of the night, he was walking back to the dressing room and I said to his dad, hold on, yes, yes, Randy's, yes, Randy's uh, bonus. And I gave him one euro and he still got it to, to this day and he says he will keep it for, for forever. He was supposed to fight and we went across to go watch him. But he had an ankle injury and he had an op. So we had lunch and that with him and the family and myself have become good friends. Um, I try and watch him, but at the end of the day, he changed, and, and again, Golden Gloves, Jeff and them, they changed my whole photography uh, thing because I got a, I got a request from, from Ring Magazine, asked if they could... Uh, use my photo and I was taken aback. Then I got um, I got approached by that, that sporting, um, um, big sporting company, I forget their Sports name. Sports Illustrated? No, no, it, it's equipment and that. And they got hold of me and Ever asked... Lost. Huh? Ever lost? Yes. Ever lost. Ever lost got hold of me and they asked me if they could use one of my photos for a gratulatory placard, which was fantastic. And then what happened, when, when Mr. Berman announced the fight between Murray and Golovkin, uh, I was there and I, I then got requests for photographs from all over the world, basically. And those relationships have still continued. I got I got friends in Russia, Argentina, Brazil, wherever. And yes, that trip to Monaco, incidentally, I paid all my own expenses. Um, it was it changed my 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 photography outlook and and let's call it career if you want to a non paying career. <laughs> but yeah, the biggest trip that you probably would have ever had was to Las Vegas. Uh, obviously, Triple G was fighting uh, Canelo Alvarez. I believe it was the first fight, right? Yes. That was the big one. That's the fight wow. that everyone was up in arms about, so which who should have won that fight. You got the opportunity to go there. Can you talk to us about Las Vegas and that experience? Yeah, Las Vegas. I can tell you lots of stories about Las Vegas, but I'll get divorced. Um, what happened was I was very fortunate. I got accreditation. And... It, it's it's a stadium owned by MGM, and there's a, like almost a sheer drop the way the seats are, are designed, and I was at the very back row. They gave me a seat there. That was unbelievable. I I became friends through Randy Caballero with um, uh, Robert Diaz. Who yes. is the manager or something with uh, Golden Boy Promotions? Golden, yes, and that relationship also so much so that when I did the book, um, Roberta said that Canelo would love a, a copy of it. So I sent I sent two two books over there, one for Roberta and one for Canelo. Wow! So that was that was a, a highlight to to be there, uh, uh, the, the, from a gambling point of view, I was stupid. S two, <laughs> two stars that meet, I should have taken all my money and put it on a draw. Personally, I think those scorecards were written out before the fight. <laughs> I thought, of course, and in my opinion, I thought that Golovkin had won. Yes, yeah, of course, I also, I also have the same opinion as you on that one. Next, we're gonna come back home real quickly your connection with boxers like Hecky Butler and his wife Roxy and, you know, filming, uh, filming, that's my job, uh, <laughs> photogra uh, yeah, doing photography for their wedding and sort of becoming more involved in their, in their sort of life. Yes. Hecky and, and Roxy, I can honestly say, as far as boxing goes, they were the first family that I adopted. Um, there's total respect. We will do anything for each other that relationship will still grow because 
my, my adopted family has extended. If you look at youngsters, DJ, DJ, I was asked to do Danika's, what would I charge to do Danika's farewell? And that family, we're now very close friends. Rainer, Raven Lindbergh, one of the nicest guys, I wouldn't say inside the ring, but outside, <laughs> yeah. yes. No, I have met, I've got so close to so many people, the Smiths, uh, Harold, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed that all the doors are open to me to go and, and I, I don't use people. I will, not, I will not charge for digital photos that I send to the boxes. Where I've got a print, yes, it's different because I will talk about the boxer will always get a cut if I sell something. And if I may mention, my, my, my photographs have, has raised in excess of 100,000 Rand for charity. Now, for me, I can't understand that. I still feel, I press a button, that's basically all I feel, and I can't believe that people were prepared to pay the one photo I sold for 17,000 Rand. So it's very, for me, it's, it's heartwarming. I'll, I want to go now to the, the bad side of things and just to touch on uh, some of the negatives. You have a really good assistant right now in Sam, but you've had some bad ones in the past and you've been, you've been, you've had sort of the bad end of the, the stick. Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I advertised and a youngster said to me that he came from Bloom to assist his, his mom because she's ill and anything he'd like to do anything. And he had, I employed the guy and things started disappearing. And we looked everywhere but at, 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 at him. And it turned out he was a druggie. And value-wise, and uh, it's gospel, he stole in the vicinity of 180,000 Rand from us. I then gave him a second chance and I had to back up. And he, said, he said maybe if he massaged my legs, uh, the pain would ease and I could try anything. And while I was lying on the bed, he'd stole money out of my back pocket. And when I saw that, I chased him away. And um, um, it's, it's very sad. Then I got a young guy who I fought to try and get accreditation and everything. Likewise, he was here one day, the next thing he disappeared with a laptop. Uh, I bought him a camera, which he still owed money on, and it was very disillusioned. Um, Sam, who, who everybody has seen around, and I'll ask her just to come give me a hug, she had done a photography course. Her parents are uh, corporate people. They wanted to go into the corporate world. She's done two years studying at, at Potch, a three-year course. I think she should have carried on, but she loves photography. And I'm actually trying to mentor. Um, the, 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 the way we, I mean, to get a young girl, she's just turned 23, got her accreditation to international hockey, lions, bulls, uh, got it to do the last rugby international. Um, boxing goes with me to East London. So the opportunity for her is great. But what's got to happen, she's got to, if she wants to make it a living, she's got to go out and find clients. Because photography, for me, I'm very, very fortunate. It's a hobby, it's a passion. But she one day will have to make a living out of it. And um, it sounds terrible, but something I will mention that if anything happens to me, she has got the use of all my equipment and that for at least a year. So yes, I'm looking to try and help and mentor. Her. And she's, she's gonna be good. She's gonna be good. She's got a lot to learn as so do I. I spend half my time on, on uh, YouTube um, I hope so you're watching SA Boxing Talk. I do, I do, <laughs> and I want to tell you something. On, on SA Boxing Talk, I've known you for a long time, 
and I never knew who or what you were. I would never have said that you boxed. Um, maybe a gigolo, a lover, yes, but a, a boxer, I'd never associated it. But at the end of the day, I've watched your work and it's just getting better and better. And I think one day you're going to be a major player in this video corporate, whatever you want to call it. I think you're going to be a major player. Uh, you, you ask pertinent questions and most people give pertinent answers and I think most of them are honest. Why would you want to sit and, and, and lie about something? So, well, big thank you. Thank you. Can that. I get Sam to come give me a hug? Yes. Sam. Sam. Please come here and give me a hug. <laughs> there you go. Look nice and purple. And here is, here is, here is Sam. You. <laughs> Now, talking about your nice and purple, the next question I'm going to ask you is, when you go to the boxing events, and you've caught this on social media a few times, haven't you? Yes. Where people will, will say, Uncle Nick is wearing very bright colours. <laughs> what's, what's, what, what is your comment about? What? What? What happened was no one told me about the dress code. I dress the same all the time. And then the next thing, I was attacked on social media. And everybody, or a lot of people, got on the bandwagon. I was going to retaliate, but I got advice, good advice, to just let it, let it uh, go. What I did do, and I, I won't mention names, but there was someone that owed me some money, and he also got on the bandwagon. So I said to him, listen, I would now like my money. I want to go and buy brighter clothes. These are dull. So I didn't know. And I think I'm never going to change. I cannot sit there and wear a sponsored T-shirt. I'm not that kind of person. But yeah, I laugh it off. And at the end of the day, so what? My mother said, if it's good enough for your grandfather, it's good enough for you. And I wear it. Nice, nice. Lastly, you said that um, you know, you've been in the game for a while now. What are your goals going forward? I really, I really want to try and get more people to perhaps come to the studio because I find it very hard. I'm going to do this for, for as long as I can. Uh, my good friend, enemy from, from Lions Rugby, one said to me, why do you do this? And I asked her, what's the alternative to not lie on my bed? So I'm a late bloomer. Uh, and I just mentioned this. There was a write-up about me in the Sunday Times magazine about late bloomers. And I only started uh, a business at the age of 52. I took my pension money. And with photography, the same. I've been doing it, you mentioned, maybe six years maximum. And at the end of the day, I have made so many friends and it will always be to build and ex give exposure to whoever I can, be it a promoter, be it a boxer, trainer, that, that's, uh, and, and I love the expression, I've used it a few times, don't judge me by what I've accomplished, but judge me by, by what I aspire to accomplish. And, that's the advice I give to most people and I use it myself. Thank you very much for coming on SA Boxing. I know we've been meaning to do this for a very long time now. The, the coffee was offered about a year ago, I believe, but I've yeah. finally arrived here and had the opportunity to do it. Thank you very much for having me. And obviously, thank you very much for the boxing community for having you and taking photos of everyone because we're also one of the people that started it out for some of the other people that are in the sport currently. So a big thank you from everyone in the photography community, in the videography community and everyone. We all appreciate you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Aiden. And thank you, my boy.